Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we'll be looking at the raw owl brewing method. So you might be wondering what raw owl is. So let's get that out of the way before we move on. Raw owl is essentially beer that has not been boiled. Is this safe you may ask? Surely we should boil our wort? Actually no. As long as you are mashing at high enough the temperature then there really is no need to actually boil your wort as what you have already done is pasteurized your wort. The milk you buy in a supermarket, for example, has never been boiled, just pasteurised also. This style of brewing outdates all other methods and is still practised today in many countries. The other common question brewers will ask is if this means that there will be DMS present. The answer to this is again no. This is because DMS is formed at temperatures between 81 to 85 degrees Celsius. We mash out at 75, so there really is no issue with DMS. Let's now look at the history of raw owl. Raw owl has been made for hundreds of years and originates, it is believed, in northern Europe. And it's actually brewed in many countries still today like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Latvia, Lithuania, Russia and actually more besides. This beer originates from a time when pots suitable to boil in were not commonplace and were out of reach for the common folk like us. The first thing to realise about raw beer is that it's actually a method, not a style. So as such the grain bill is actually completely wide open. Naturally because the hop side is not boiled there is a limitation on beer styles that you can brew if you just use the traditional method. However, there are various methods that can be employed to open this up. I'll now go through those now. The first method is to add your hops to the mash and keep them in the mash and throughout the sparge also. This will give you a small bump in your IBU compared to simply just doing a first wort. Secondly, naturally you can add the hops as first wort, which means adding them just before you start your sparge. Thirdly, you can make a hop tea, which is essentially a concentrate, by adding the hops to boiling water, and the longer you boil them for, the more IBU will you will extract. Naturally, to keep this IBU, just make sure you use as little water as possible. I would also urge caution on boils longer than two hours, as it is possible that this can result in harshness, but it will vary from hop to hop. Once you've made this up, you need to let it cool some, and then drain this resulting hop tea into your wort in the early stages. This will allow you to gain even more IBU, but how much more is hard to calculate. Finally, you can make a hop tea with water and let it sit at between 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. Leave it for 8 hours or more, and this fits to replicate 0 minute additions. And it's really best to add this after the fermentation process is finished, and you'll really get all of those flavours through very nicely. Now naturally all of this does move away from the traditional method and uses some modern day techniques but I just want you all to understand that many things are possible with this method without you mass boiling any liquid. This will be shown in your electricity or propane bill at the end also of course. Some people also like to avoid a mass boil simply because of the smell or and the moisture that builds up in the brewing area. So you see there is much that can be achieved with an old method accompanied by new. Ok, so let's skip to the chase. How does it taste? Well, I for one really love the taste, but there is no guarantee that everyone will. Raw beer certainly contributes more flavour via the malt than a beer that has been boiled. The main difference being that a boil will actually drive off protein. A raw beer retains this protein, meaning more flavour and a fuller body and you will also note more of a grain stroke straw like flavour backing. Because generally these beers are not bitter, this really gives a nice balance to those flavours actually. And finally how does it look? Well you know there is much protein in a beer of this type, but of course you can clean this up with the usual methods for clarity. In a natural state it's kind of like a wheat beer really, but it can look clearer like any other style if you work methods for clarity. If you like, have a look at my video guide on this channel that talks about everything clarity for more information. 
And finally, let's look at cleanliness and sanitization. Some raw owl brewers that I have met actually swear by cleaning and sanitizing their brewing systems before use with a raw owl. They feel this is an important step. I have also met those that laugh at the idea, saying that pasteurization temperatures should really take care of this. As always, make your own mind up on this. The recipes that I like for brewing as raw beer are generally quite simple. I like the yeast to be the feature, so Saison yeast works as well as Norwegian Kvake. I will remind you again though that effectively you can brew many other beer styles with this method. I commonly brew with 50% Filsner and 50% Pale Al, and just give it 25 IBUs via a high alpha uh, bittering hop that is neutral. Warrior is my go-to for this. So here is my recipe. Do note this is for 30 litres or 7.4 US liquid gallons. In this brew I'm actually using Norwegian floor malted Pilsner malt at 75% along with Red X at 25%. I should think this will work well but I've not brewed with these ratios before now. As usual I'm shooting for 25 IBU and I am using Warrior hops. Because this is not a tried and tested recipe, I'm not going to list it anywhere, but I've included it in this video just for your potential interest. Before we move on to the brewing process, I want to say a little about the brewing system that I'm using here. I had an awful lot of people ask me about this when I actually posted a picture of it in the last video. So for that reason, I'm going to give you a bit more detail than I usually would within a video like this. Before I do that, I want to make it extremely crystal clear that I do not have any financial link to this company, and this system is currently on loan from them, and they simply want my opinion on it as an experienced brewer. I do have their permission to put it in this video, and I also have their permission to do a review, should I wish to. My policy is that I only review products that I really like. I do not ever want my channel to have many reviews because really the purpose of this channel is to teach people brewing and everything that comes along with that. I am currently testing this system and once I have some more brews under my belt and have the right level of experience with it then I can make a full judgement. But so far I have to say I'm really impressed. I will be using the Brew Tools B40 Pro. This is a brewing system from Norway and it's actually the smallest unit that they make at 40 litres. There is also an 80 litre unit too. It feels very fitting to use a Norwegian system for such a brew considering its long history of raw ale brewing. The system is currently only available in Europe and for more information here is the manufacturer's website. There are plans to bring this system to Australia, New Zealand and the US. This could happen late this year apparently, but there is nothing set in stone as yet. If you have any questions about this system, then please contact the company themselves directly via their website, as really they are the experts of this product. Before starting the brew, I did clean and sanitise the brewing system and all its pipework before using it, just to be on the safe side. Make your own choice here of course, I just prefer caution. On this system you have a multi-purpose head unit that works for recirculation, sparging and cleaning and the pump has fully adjustable control by percentage on the touchscreen controller. I then added the mash water using calculations from the Brewfather app which has full support for both Brutals system sizes and I then set up the process of heating the mash water before adding my grain. This mash water was very quickly heated and I started adding my grain at less than a kilo at a time, ensuring that it was well stirred in, meaning that every grain was wet and there were no clumps. One great thing here for me is the grain I am using for the base malt is actually grown in Norway and it's being supplied by a company called Nosk Malt. This simply means Norwegian malt. How very fitting and very fitting for this brew. I like this grain because it is malted in an old traditional way and the flavour benefits from this. I then mashed for one hour experimenting with the pump's percentage of power via the touchscreen to maximise efficiency. I then rose to my mash out temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. You could mash out at 77 if you prefer it, just do not go near 81 as that could lead to DMS issues, particularly if you're using traditionally old style malted grain that does not have all of the modifications of mainstream malt that we enjoy today. 
I then started the sparge. I had to do this manually rather than using the internal system because I lacked the hosing for it. However, I do prefer a more manual approach to sparging to maximise the washing of the sugars. Do note that the sparge water I used here was cold. There is no point using anything else in a raw ale brew as you are now looking to reduce temperature, not increase it for a boil. The main trick to a successful sparge is to only cover the top of the grain bed with a small amount of water in height. Add too much height and your efficiency will simply drop. So straight after the sparge it is time to finish off the cooling to your yeast's pitching temperature. As you can see here this system has its own counterflow chiller that is of top market premium quality. It works in that super efficient way that we've all come to love, but with this system it can be used and set up with many different options of configuration available. This customization theme is one of the great things about this system, and it is a theme throughout the brew as a whole. This system shows all relevant information on screen when you are chilling via the touchscreen display. You will note that it has two temperature probes to do this. The second is an optional upgrade. So the way I have set up this particular valve for this brew is that the counterflow chiller and the wall out are connected. Once I have the temperature I want, then I can just change the valve direction and the wall will continue to be cooled, but also transferred directly into my conical fermenter. Pretty smart. So let's now move from brew porn to yeast porn. I am using Mitbusk Fake from Stordal in Norway for this brew. It has a simply delicious intense tropical fruit flavour to it. I have put its vital statistics on screen for your interests. Do note that this is not available commercially, but the best yeast banks and labs across the world will have it. There is also a Facebook group online called Kveg Sherp Salg, which essentially means yeast buying and selling. If you go to this, obviously they are Norwegian people, but they are very friendly and they will speak English if you ask them to. It should also be realised that Kveg bought that is commercially available invariably is not actually real Kveg, but a single isolated strain. Here it is not long after I pitched it. This was pitched late afternoon on Sunday, and by the time I woke up early in the morning on Tuesday it was finished. If you have not tried Kveg before, then you should also be told that this conditions very quickly, even if you used it with high alcohol recipes. Check out my Norwegian Farmhouse Brews playlist for more information. So this is now the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. It was my aim to make this content informative, interesting, and at some points even funny. I hope I succeeded for the majority. I don't even pretend to think that I can please all of the people all of the time. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I'm a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy brewing!